Hi, movie lovers. Today I'm going to complete my discussion of the five films that are included in the recent Arrow release of Lies and Deceits, which is over here. Uh, those are the other four movies. The fifth one is Torment, or La Enfer. Uh, before I get started, though, with this, I uh, talk about this movie, I, I wanted to mention that I have been, um, I've been linking uh, to Solitary Ronin's uh, uh, YouTube channel because he discussed all these films as well as many many other Clutch Brawl films well worth checking out uh, so you'll find a link in the description box below but now back to uh, Torment I don't know why Arrow called this movie Torment because everywhere in the supplements every review I read everybody calls it La Fur, which is I guess a liter literally um, uh, it would be uh, would be hell in in, in translation, um, and uh, torment or Lagver stars uh, Francois Cluzet as Paul, a common name in culture ball movies, and Emmanuel Biart plays Nelly, and uh, they are a married couple. The story is basically the evolution of their marriage. Uh, very happy at first, jealousy worms its way into the mind of Paul. It leads to paranoia, leads to abuse, it leads to insanity, <laughs> a living hell, at least for Paul and Nelly. Um, and it's set in a, um, in a resort hotel that Paul has sort of overextended himself financially to, uh, to purchase. He, um, but, uh, and, and, but but it seems to be doing pretty well. There is some competition on the uh, uh, on, on the edges, uh, but um, uh, and Nelly proves to be very gregarious. She's flirtatious. Uh, Paul's enjoying his marriage. He's he, he's uh, ecstatic with Nelly, um, and parenthood comes along. <laughs> Suddenly, Nelly's attentions uh, have to. Be shared, and uh, and her her natural gregariousness, which is perfect for the for a uh, resort uh, hotel, suddenly begins to bother Paul, uh, and and he develops all kinds of of uh, scenarios in his mind. He doesn't want to share the pleasures of Nellie with anybody else. Now I've admit, I've always had mixed feelings about Law and Prayer because narratively. Um, Paul definitely is clearly insane. It's early in the second half of the film, and yet nobody ever says, Nelly, get him help. Paul, you need to get help. There's even a, one of the most perplexing scenes in the movie, in all of Chabrol's movies, with a doctor that at a point where Paul is clearly insane, and he doesn't seem to be taking it all that seriously, <laughs> uh, especially as, as far as Paul's violent behavior. Uh, but on the other hand, and I saw the movie a, a few days ago, and I didn't really know how to approach it, but because even with my misgivings about that aspect of the film, the, the film cinematically is just, it has such brilliant sequences in it. And, um, and, and, and part of that is the opening sequence where about seven years of Paul and Nellie's life is compressed down to about 12 minutes, and it's just beautifully done. We get to know everything really we need to know to that point about the couple and their marriage. Um, and, and then at the, at the end of the film, there's another fantastic sequence. I mean, the final 12 minutes of the movie are, is just an, an amazing uh, accomplishment by the actors and the uh, and, and just Chabrol's cinematic language because he is playing uh, with compression, the, the compression of time, the expansion of time. And Chabrol talks about this in some depth in the, in the, in the, uh, in the specific scene commentaries that's avail available on this movie and all the other ones in, in, in the set. Um, so he compresses time, he expands time, and the finale, time seems to no longer even exist. <laughs> uh, and there's, there's a couple of brilliant passages also along the way. Uh, and this is, uh, the, the screenplay for Bob Four is really amazing because 30 years before, 
Henri Georges Clouseau had prepared this film and had actually filmed three weeks of the screenplay before the leading actor got uh, became ill and then <clears throat> Clouseau himself became ill. So they, they shut down pr production. Romy Schneider played the Nelly part, the Emmanuel Briard part. Um, and and uh, Clouseau's uh, widow gave the, uh, the rights to the screenplay to Chabral thinking that you know, they had been friends, Clouseau and Chabral at one time, and wondered if he wanted to make a movie of it. There were three different uh, drafts of this screenplay. Chabral liked the first one, but he, he did change it around in that uh, Clouseau's conception was as flashback. Chabral thought that would be, it, it wouldn't work because uh, in, in, if we see Paul at the end when he's clearly insane, we're going to see everything in the flashbacks from his subjective point of view. So he changed it to a linear point of view. And there are, there are some uh, interesting um, uh, connections between Clouseau and, and Chabral in that they both had a very dark side, <laughs> dark, they had dark view of human nature and uh, what, <clears throat> what uh, lies beneath the surface of, uh, of, of, uh, of marriage in particular. And, um, and <clears throat> uh, with uh, Clouseau, marriage was like a, a battlefield. It was, it was like a war. And I, I kept, kept getting reminded of a, a rather overlooked Clouseau film, Manot, which is really about a relationship, a marriage that is just absolutely, the sadomasochism is just uh, off the charts here. But Clouseau wasn't a very subtle filmmaker, whereas Chabrol is. You know, he, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't spell things out for you in, in quite so um, distinctive a way. You, you're, you're left to, to see whether are we seeing, how much of this are we actually seeing through Paul's subjective eyes? There are times when, when uh, Nelly appears to be <laughs> lying to him, uh, but the, but you know there's never any actual proof that she is cheating on him. But Paul just he he doesn't care. He he's seeing it in his mind's eye, um, and and Clouseau is is I think it's fair to say is a misanthrope. He, he, I don't think I don't think Clouseau liked people very much. He could be cruel. Chabrol, even though he sees this dark nature in people, I think he tends far more to the humanist side. Um, he has sympathy, especially for his female characters, and, his, and, and most particularly in Lion Fur, you know, the women having to deal with this craziness of the male ego, paranoia, the male wanting to control the female, the patriarchy, not giving enough options as to what, what a woman can be men not being able to see women for who they are. This is all part of, of, of uh, many of, of Claude Chabrol's films. And again, there's the sympathy. Um, <clears throat> in the, um, in, in, I mentioned that we get a lot of Chabrol in, in the supplements of, on this film. Uh, he, uh, he, there is a specific interview where he talks, he, he addresses uh, uh, Clouseau and his movies and uh, the screenplay and what he thought about it. And again, uh, scene specific commentary uh, and where he does indeed address this conception, this cinematic conception of, of, uh, of how he dealt with time as a subject, as the theme of the movie. We get a, a terrific interview with Marin Karmitz. And Marin Karmitz was the producer of the last third, I guess, uh, maybe even closer to uh, half of uh, Chabrol's movies. And, um, and it points out the, how important producers are in the whole process of filmmaking. <laughs> and when you have a good producer like Marin uh, Karmitz, who was so supportive, and he thought that Chabrol was in this down period and he was just doing too many movies just because Chabrol liked to film movies. He, he would, Carmen says Chabrol would be happy if he just filmed from morning to night, you know, every day of the week. But he was being given uh, subjects and screenplays that he really didn't care that much for, but then he would say, well, why not? Let's give it a go. Where, so Carmen uh, gave him a deal where, which I thought was kind of extraordinary, he, 
he told Chabral that I, would, I will pay you a weekly salary, and they came to some agreement what that would be. And you can prepare the film and take your time, get it the way you want to, and then whenever you want to make the film, that's when you start. And uh, he was confident, Carmen's confident that Chabral, he was a big admirer of, of uh, and had worked with Chabral before, uh, before uh, uh, Carmen's had been, been a producer. And uh, he was confident that there would be commercial appeal, which there was, because the second, this la latter part of uh, Chabral's films, he got worldwide distribution, he got uh, very much noticed, the films overall made money. Also in the supplements, um, well, we, we get a commentary. The commentary is by Alexandra Heller and Nicholas and Josh Nelson. And this is, uh, they're Australian. I th I've, I've heard them at least once before. Um, and they, they kind of, uh, this is the type of commentary where you're sort of, uh, uh, they're at, it's sort of as if they were at a uh, Chabral symposium. It's very intellectual. Uh, and they're, they're giving their papers to uh, fellow academics. Uh, and, and they're very polemical in that they're constantly uh, quoting from critics, uh, from uh, historians, uh, and then they argue with those criticism. Now, I enjoyed it. I, I got them. It's not my favorite kind of uh, commentary, but every once in a while it's good to see some sort of academic, theoretical. Uh, um, Heller Nicholas has a very ideological approach uh, to the film, uh, and, and sometimes that, that, that can be pretty interesting. Um, and, uh, but they, they, they tend to get away from the text that we're watching. I like to watch the films and, and listen to the commentary, but I was watching the film and the commentary was all into, uh, you know, these abstract ideas that uh, are very, uh, you know, appealing to academics for average viewers like myself. Oh, not always so interesting. But then in the booklet, and I, I'm not sure how much I showed of this booklet that comes with it, or it comes with the, um, this box set, which is beautiful and comprehensive. And here's, here's the happy couple, <laughs> Paul and Nellie, before, before uh, his jealousy overcomes him. But it, there's also in this, in this booklet essays on each of the, film and the uh, films, and the essay on this one is uh, in La Fur is by Kat Ellinger, and she is, you know, brilliant. I mean, the succinct, concise um, interpretation of the film that, that uh, really enhances, I think, the appreciation of the film. So La uh, Fur, I mean, to me, problematic movie. Sometimes I think it's a great movie, and sometimes I, you know, I'm a little perplexed by it. It's really the story of Melly, and, and, and when you think about, go back, and I think Roger Ebert mentions this in his contemporaneous review of, of uh, Long Fur, which he really liked. He said, you think, at the end, you think it's, it, it's really Nellie, you know, it, it, what she has to go through. And that, that does sort of uh, bring the film, when you look at it that way, it brings the film into another level, I think, of, uh, of artistic achievement, of nothing else. So that's... That'll do it with my uh, uh, Lies and Deceits uh, uh, box set. Uh, and there's another one coming. I believe it's the end of April. Another four of, of Chabral's late, later films are coming from Arrow at the end of April. So I'll do an overall wrap-up after, um, after that set comes out because there's a couple books I want to read in the meantime. Guy Austin wrote a book that's, that is constantly referred to by, in, in the commentary. Uh, and there's a book of interviews with Chabral. I really want it. Want it. I've, I've read excerpts from it, but I, I want to get the book. Uh, so I'll read those two books and then uh, finish them by the time the next set comes out. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen to me. I do appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.